Hey guys and gals, Joe here, the man who still cries when I watch Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And I'm here to talk about UFC Fight Night, Luque vs. Osanios. So, enough talk. Let's get to the fights. Starry, starry night. Paint your palette blue and gray. So in the main event of the evening, we had a welterweight fight between a guy who graduated my boy's stable and I thought was going to go back in, in Vicente Luque, taking on a guy who is probably the most underrated fighter in MMA history, Javier Dos Anjos. So Vicente Luque, he had to get special approval to actually fight here after a knockout loss last August to Jeff Neal. And then RDA, he had some mixed results. He's been kind of hopping in divisions. He was at welterweight for a while, fought for an interim belt here. Then went back down to lightweight, did pretty good. Had a really kind of a one-sided shellacking against Moicano, and then he fought uh, Rafael Fazayev, lost by knockout. Like I think in the very beginning of the fifth round, I think it was fifth round. And then he came back with the Brian Barberina submission win in his return to welterweight. So here he is, second fighter welterweight uh, in this current run. And this fight saw a lot of wrestling from Luke. Eh? With attempts with him defending pretty well from the grappling attempts of RDA, trying to get some submissions in there. He attacked with some submissions, like a Darsh Choke submission, I remember, later in the fight. It wasn't the greatest fight, but for a guy I'm a fan of that had a two-fight losing streak and a massive health scare, it's sadly to be expected. You know what I mean? Luke took a unanimous decision with three times the control time of RDA. I think he had like a little bit over 10 minutes in there. I think probably closer to 11 minutes, 10 minutes, I'd imagine. And as much as we want that killer Vicente Luque to come back, the silent assassin, I think he needed to get confidence back first. And I think this is a decent step in bringing that Luque back. I think this is a good, a good, a good way of doing it. For the co-main event of the evening, we have Cub Swanson taking on Hakeem Dawadu. This was a brawl. <laughs> Hakeem was landing the harder shots, but there was really some good moments there of Cub kind of flowing and letting loose. He always likes to attack from those awkward angles with like awkward body movements. It kind of makes it hard to read where he's going to throw from. Very wild, just chaotic, beautiful style. He's, I forgot what I called it in a retro review, but it fits perfectly. Um, just beautiful chaos in there when he's striking and flowing. At the end of the second round, he's really flowing and letting it rip and stuns down with you at the very end of the round. And so in my heart, he stole that round. Last round, though, all cub. He got a big takedown and was trying to work from top position. Had a really cool way of taking the back uh, with this really cool entanglement against the cage. It was sweet. Um, it went to decision, though, where Hakeem Dawadu lost to Cub Swanson, uh, to the shock of many, and Cub Swanson himself. Cub Swanson openly said he was shocked he won the decision, and uh, felt he lost. Cub Swanson openly saying he lost. My heart says Cub won it. My brain was saying Dawadu won it. I'm a little torn here. Um, I'm really curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this fight. That fight was really good, though. That was a pretty fun fight. Uh, Cub Swanson always loved a blast to see on the card, honestly. See Cubs once, and I'm like, I hope I catch that fight. It's going to be great. Uh, and so after that, though, we have Killy Roundtree taking on Chris Dawkins. So I'm, I bring this up for a little mini rant, I guess you could say. So light heavyweight fight between the former heavyweight Chris Dawkins, Killy Roundtree. So we have a former heavyweight that was getting finished by the upper echelon of his division, all by finish knockout. I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was Derek Lewis first. It was uh, in a December card. I think it was last year. Then uh, Curtis Blades. Then Jarzino Rosenstruck. I believe that was that. That's the one I'm kind of a little iffy on. I probably should have looked at it beforehand. But, uh, and yeah, three guys. Good power in all three of those guys. Underrated power for Curtis Blades' case. Um, cutting weight, you know, after this, where his streak is going to be affected, and it's easier to be concussed when you're dropping an 08. Taking on a guy with a lot of knockout power and great striking, not much else, admittingly, I think. I think he has some issues rounding out his game, but incredible striker, incredible Muay Thai striker. He's a lot of fun and great power. Um, that is on a three-fight winning streak, a three-fight losing streak. It's a three-fight winning streak. Hmm. Yeah, we're just really, really superb matchmaking here, I think. 
And guess what happened, guys? Guess what happened? Just take a wild guess here. Um, Chris Dawkins got knocked out in the first round by a straight left. Uh, just right down the middle. And, uh, you know, great work from Roundtree, honestly. Uh, and I'm trying to take him, I'm trying to take this one away from him. He's looked great. He's in going to start, has a four-fight winning streak. He's looking good. And, uh, yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about him a little bit later. But, man, this is rough matchmaking if you're Chris Dawkins, I think. Dude was 4-0 starting off. And I thought that Derek Lewis, I thought those last three fights were very fair what you do. But now they just kind of tossed him in the blender here. You know, it kind of reminds me of, like, Augusta Sakai, who was a top 10 guy, and then he got finished by Overeem first, I think, and then I believe it was maybe, I think it was Taito Ivasa second, and Rosenstruck, I think, was in there as well. It kind of reminds me of that, where he's just like, eh, you know. Um, just tossed him through the blender. I feel, I feel bad. I feel really bad for the guy. Um, I don't think that was good matchmaking here. I think you probably should have put him against someone uh, who isn't, you know, scorching hot. That doesn't have knockout power. If you that is, if you want to invest in him, um, I think it's I, I, I'm okay with like totally, you know, having a little bit more fair matchmaking for both guys instead of uh, this. This has felt very unfair, you know. It's rough, rough one. Um, but Cleo Roundtree, he wants a ranked fighter next. And not just a ranked fighter, he wants a five-rounder. He wants to headline one of these random Apex cards, get a ranked fighter in there. I'm going to call it now. Me, this is me, Babe Ruth, calling this home run, this homer. And uh, I'm going to say it's Anthony Smith. I got a weird feeling Anthony Smith's going to be like, yeah, I'll do this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just me. It's a personal thing. But what about the rest of the card? Well, Yasmin Lucindo tapped out one of the most marketable uh, fighters in Poliana Viana, and that made me a little happy, even though I find her incredibly attractive. It made me a little happy because I remembered having to watch her fight J.J. Aldrich in a retro review. Anyways, sorry, I got a little sad there remembering that. Uh, Marcus McGee added another painful octagon moment for J.P. Buys with just this huge right hand and kind of like pseudo face plants in him. JP buys like hit his head on the forehead and just struggling to kind of get up. Um, it was an awkward, great knockout. It was a really good one. First round KO for Marcus McGee. Terrence McKinney took on Mike Breeden filling in for Lando Venado who was injured and he continued the streak of just winning in the first round. He feels like that guy that can win against anyone in round one, but then he just runs out of gas or something and it just gets finished in the second round. Um, I think Drew Dober finished him in the first round, if I remember correctly. But Drew Dober finishes most people pretty quickly, usually. Um, Damon Blackshear, he pulled off the third twister in promotion history against Jose Johnson in the first round. Uh, this was a bantamweight fight. And the reason I'm saying this, in the comments, if you want some bonus points, how about this, a little, hit, little history trivia for you. What were the other two? What were the other two? I'm sure we can all remember the first one. The second one, a little bit harder to remember, I think. Uh, and I'll give you a little hint. They were both at featherweight. Um, and finally, Luana Stantos stopped tough winner Juliana Miller, which I was a little disappointed with because I think Juliana Miller, I was hoping she would be turn out to be something. But she stopped her in her debut with punches in the very first round. But then for my little weekly news section, section I guess we could say, let's talk about Sean Strickland fighting for a title. It's a little weird. I never thought I'd say that. Uh, like at least this year. Sean Strickland fighting Izzy, huh? I, I feel like the logical step here is to wait for DDP. Because DDP is clearly number one contender. Sean Strickland's fighting a guy who was 1 0 in the UFC in a main event and beat him pretty, you know. He lost the first round, I thought, barely, but like, finished him. Stopped him with punches. Sean Strickland doesn't really do that. It's kind of odd, you know what I mean? But. They just really want Izzy main eventing in Australia. And I, you know, I get it. I get it because can you imagine the UFC goes to Brazil for a pay-per-view? The main event of this Brazilian pay-per-view, Leon Edwards, Bilal Muhammad. Or let's go to, we go to London. Let's go to London. All right, what's the main event? What's the main event going to be in London? Pantoja Moreno 3. Or 4, I guess. Okay. Okay. Like, it's, 
America, we have a ton of fight. I'm, I'm you know, obviously I'm, I'm American. Uh, we have a ton of events, and we have a ton of events that are headlined by two guys not from America, like Leon Edwards, Kamaru Usman one, uh, two, I should say. They, they have third fight. Uh, and, yeah, it, it's like, it's very odd. Uh, like, you know, I mean, like, but America has a ton of events. You know, like I was saying, America has a ton of events, and it's really odd if you go to another country that doesn't get very many events and have non people who aren't from there headlining events, you know, headlining that event, especially if you can make it work around it. Like, you know, um, it's one thing if Leon pulls out and he's injured and can't fight in London, or Izzy pulls out, he can't fight and make it there. Um, you have to make do with what you can. You know, Ronda Rousey, Holly Holm, probably shouldn't have brought that fight up for Carl's sake, but they headlined in Australia. Um, so I kind of get it, and uh, Ronda Rousey also headlined in Brazil once. So I kind of get it, but at the same time, you you can't, you want a hometown or home country, one of your countrymen to fight on that kind of regional specialty card, in a sense. So, uh, you know, it's making the fans happy, making fans happy for shelling out all the money it takes to, you know, buy a ticket and get it, go to these fights live. I get it. That said, I really don't like Izzy's coach being like, well, I guess DDP's going to have to work his way up from the bottom. He lost it. The dude was injured. The dude was injured. I mean, it wasn't like wasn't like he said, no, I'm not doing this. I don't want to fight Izzy in his home country. I, at least that from what I know, he's injured, right? It's like a hand problem, I think I heard. I don't know. It's really weird. But then again, this is the same guy that didn't say Robert Whitaker probably shouldn't fight Izzy a second time. Because they should wait around and see if Darren Till gets two wins in a row. Odd guy, that guy. But that's it for me. I'll be back next week, of course, to review and recap UFC 292. And, of course, it's pay-per-view week. So guess what? We got a retro review on the main channel this week. I'm super pumped. We have a new editor, Augie. He's a great guy. Me and him actually work together on this video. You know, more so than usual. I, he was like, he wanted to be there. Be a little bit more hands-on when I shot it. It was really kind of a cool experience shooting it with him. Um, he managed to take my jumbled mess of jokes and tactical analysis and turn them into this beautiful masterpiece I'm very excited to show off. Uh, also, be sure to check out the UFC 292 preview show, which I just shot with Carl right before I shot this video. Uh, it, he had a great time doing it. It was actually really funny. We always, I always try my hardest to make him break and laugh really hard. I mean, it's always a blast. Uh, I'm Joe with the INT, though. Thank you for watching.